Hey guys, I'm Sheldon. And I'm Griffin. And we're 20XY. And in today's video, we're going to cover professional communication. What is it? Why it's important? And share some of our thoughts and tips on the topic. Let's get into it. What is professional communication? To us, this refers to written, verbal, and nonverbal practices that you adopt to convey specific messages about your capabilities and your personality as a professional and in a professional setting. When we say written, we mean your understanding and use of language to communicate clearly via text. This could be email, SMS, social media comments, etc. Verbal. Your understanding of how to speak clearly and confidently. Articulation, patience, and clarity are key points to emphasize here. Equally as important, but often overlooked, is nonverbal communication. Think of this as how you present yourself. What do people see and assume from your appearance in person or via profile? Usually in professional communication, you're doing so in regards to a business or an organization. But really, it can be used anywhere you're trying to convey a professional attitude or demeanor. So next, why is professional communication even important? In terms of masculinity, your ability to communicate in a professional way can express confidence, create opportunities for yourself, and allow you to be looked at as a leader that can effectively articulate a vision or a solution to a problem. Having great professional communication skills can mean the difference between getting a job, getting a promotion, landing a client, or even building a strong relationship. Most of the problems in an organization arise from poor communication. Knowing how to avoid this before it even begins can save yourself a headache. It's important to be able to listen to others' thoughts and ideas while being able to effectively communicate your own. Great communication skills can inspire others and put you in a position to effectively lead others. Be able to differentiate who you're communicating to and what type of communication you need to use for the situation. So now we're going to share some of our thoughts and tips on how we refine our professional communication skills. Practice. Just like anything else, you'll get better by doing it more. Practice may feel rigid, and in some respects it can be, but through practice you can refine your own style of communication in a professional setting that is unique to you. So another tip that has significantly helped me to refine my own professional communication has been simply getting a second opinion. Try speaking to your friends and family to ask for feedback. This is often the best way to practice. While being able to communicate effectively is important, make sure you know how to listen. Being able to listen to others, whether that be your colleagues or your friends, helps you to answer in a more meaningful and professional way. Another tip that we would offer for professional communication would be to have a business card. Having something that would lead anyone you interact with to make an extra degree of effort to connect or remember you. Business cards are most often passed along in person at networking events. However, in light of more recent circumstances, it's unlikely that large gatherings will be the norm for quite a while. So the idea or the physical business card may be something that you'd consider transitioning away from. You may consider moving towards something like a digital business card. I use a digital business card from Popple. All I have to do is tap it to the back of anyone's phone and it instantly takes them to my profile where I have my Instagram, email, Facebook, and YouTube. I can even set it to just take someone straight to my Instagram. You can get these in any color and even customize them with your logo. If you also want to give it a try, you can use our code 20XY at checkout to save 20% off your purchase. You can also just click the link below in the description. So what are some tips that you would give someone to refine their professional communication skills going into something like an interview? Good question. I would say the first thing I would suggest to anybody looking uh, at an interview or seeking an interview is to be prepared. Mock interviews can be an excellent way for you to build confidence answering questions, expressing yourself as a professional, and expressing your capabilities and why you might be right for the role or the job that you're interviewing for. Now, the interview itself is really kind of um, a mix of verbal and nonverbal communication. What many people reference as kind of their guiding uh, document in an interview is their resume. So that is almost expressly written communication. Right. So in combination with your verbal skills, speaking to somebody, answering questions, uh, presenting yourself in a way that fulfills the roles and the questions that, that they have for you, 
is really kind of built on that foundation that you establish in your resume through your written communication. So the more information you can put in a concise uh, format on the resume, the better your chances to be able to refer to it and provide accurate answers to the interviewer uh, is very important. Know who you're going to be speaking with on the interview. Exactly. Uh, if, you, if you know it's gonna be somebody who you need to form a relationship if you potentially get the job, and is going to be an important part of your professional development, you need to understand like what their role in the company is so that you can also be prepared to ask them questions about what they expect from you, mm -hmm. um, what they expect out of, what they expect as far as growth, and what kind of their vision for, for the company is as well. Asking them questions is actually a really smart and important interview technique. Yes, yes, because it shows that you've done the homework, you've Research the company. Um, yes, yes. You've done your diligence to say, hey, this is this is the right fit for me. I just have a few questions to like improve my own understanding of the role so that I can be better prepared for it. Right. Would you say that um, like your appearance and the way you look and dress is an important part of professional communication? I would. Go ahead. I would. And in fact, I would say that's very important. Um, you can be one of the most well-spoken people and be a great conversationalist in an interview, but you know that interview starts as soon as, as soon as they put their eyes on you, yep. and that can go be, shake their hand or yes, yes, and this is a great hands. example, of like a, a combination of verbal, nonverbal, and written communication. Mm -hmm. The nonverbal cues that you give, so what you do with your hands, where your eye con how you maintain eye contact, and again how you look and how you dress are very important, mm -hmm. um, and again relevant to the interview itself. You need to understand the dress code or the expectations of dress code that an organization has or a specific role has uh, before you go into it. But let's say the interviewer decides to look up your LinkedIn profile or any you on social media. What are you signaling through those nonverbal cues? You know, do you have some tips for how people can refine their nonverbal communication over social over say a social media profile? Yeah, of course. Don't post pictures of you doing illegal activities or of you underage drinking or of you just doing things that you wouldn't want to show your parents. Um, if you're going to post these things, which it happens, make your Instagram private or your social media is private. Keep a small circle. Don't make this public for people to see. Yeah, that's definitely one way you can at least limit the distribution of some of the content that you just, you know, have to put on social media. Yeah, keeping your circle small can be helpful. And there's some features on social media apps now that are like your close friends or, right. you know, tailored lists for people yeah. to see so your you can content. just share a picture with just certain people. Yeah. Just your friends. Yeah. I, I, keep, my, I keep my social media as, as private as I can. But again, like you said, I'm thinking, why would I put things on there that I wouldn't yeah. want, that I would think somebody would be disappointed in seeing? Right. That's not where I'm going to post my feet pictures. Only fans? Only feet. So what are some tips you have for working on your public speaking skills? Ooh, so this is, again, referring to some of the things we said earlier, going to really be improved with practice and preparedness. So public speaking can be, rather, one of the most terrifying things that you will ever do, especially if you've never done it before. I'm sure you've heard people say that there's, there was some study done that people fear public speaking more than death. I don't know how re relevant that is or how accurate it is, but it can definitely be terrifying. I can, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, like I would rather die than go on stage and speak right now. Um, but the thing is, the more you do it, the better you get at it. I think the biggest tip I would give for public speaking is really try to cut out likes and ums and use pauses as strategic ways of thinking through a, thinking through mm -hmm. a speech or thinking through what you're going to say next. Yeah. So don't say um in that pause. Right. Just kind of pause. Right. And, and we even say ums and likes in these videos every now and then. But when you're giving a speaking, speaking engagement, I would actually think of it more of as a performance. Um, you might even have a script. You might even have some talking points. That's good. That's fine. Read them to yourself. Become very familiar with them. And perform it. What would you say to these tips of people saying, like, imagine people in their underwear or... Imagine everyone has a flamingo on their head or just some random thing. I've actually never heard that flamingo one, but I, I don't actually think the purpose of giving people of giving others that advice is really to actually visualize people in their underwear. I think it's to kind of bring someone down like it, bring someone down the mountain a little bit or bring someone off the cliff a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you think about if you think about something ridiculous, 
you're gonna not be as nervous before you right. go up. So it kind of relaxes you. Yeah, it kind of like it kind of like curbs your expectations by giving you something dumb to think about. Like if I got up and looked at everybody in their underwear, I would feel really awkward. Probably that I'm not the only one. That I'm not in my underwear. Like, what am I doing up here? <laughs> you can think. You can think of things like that if you'd like, but it's really to just kind of ease nerves and tension to give you something to focus on. That's not, you know, the speech ahead of you. Okay, so we talked about interviews. We talked about public speaking. But what would you say about written communication? Yes. Yeah, so written communication is one of those things that I think pe- that I think people think they are way better at than they actually are. You have to think of all the different ways that you communicate in a written format. Text message, email, social media comments, chat rooms, and maybe a conference call. All of that is your written communication. It really comes down also to your fundamental understanding of language and how to use it to communicate something clearly to someone so that there's no ambiguity Mm -hmm. and so that you're asking or saying something specific. But like anything, if you practice it, For me, second opinions have been very helpful for communication. Having someone who is good at it look at it and say, oh, you know, this isn't clear, you need to do this, you need to, you know, greet this person this way. Ask them to proofread it. Yes, proofreading, especially before you send um, send an important email, say, for a job, (laughs) for an interview, um, for business you're working with. Yeah, for a client that you want to pick up or for a a business that you want to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. Um, Having good written communication skills. Uh, can can really set you apart. There you have it guys, our basic understanding of professional communication from our experiences. Answering questions about professional communication, what is it, why is it important, and sharing some of our thoughts and tips that have helped us along the way. If you found this topic interesting, make sure to give it a thumbs up to let us know that you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, linked below, to keep up with everything that we're doing in the future. Finally, feel free to leave a comment sharing your thoughts on anything that we mentioned in today's video that you'd like for us to cover in more detail. We're happy to have a discussion and your feedback is essential for helping us create content that you want to see. Again, if you want to give Popple a try, use our code 20XY at checkout to save 20% off your purchase. Or you can just click the link below in the description. We've been 20XY, Refining Modern Manliness. I'm Griffin. I'm Sheldon. We'll see you soon. See ya.